In today's video, we're gonna talk about the 11th generation of Thunderbird. Now, this is a car that Ford built during the end of the retro phase. Now, I'm gonna say this is a car that Ford never should have built. Now, I know that's gonna be controversial with those that own and love these cars. However, from a corporate perspective, it made little sense. For those that own these cars, they should feel lucky they have one because Ford's marketing team ignored all of the warning signs when they built it. Quit toying, Baba! Easy. I know what I'm doing. We'll circle back around to why I say this at the end of the video, but for now, let's jump into all things 11th generation Thunderbird. Ford built three prototype Thunderbird concept cars in order to gauge public interest. They were designed by a team led by Jack Telnak. You may know his work as he was responsible for ushering in the new Aero cars at Ford. These include the 1979 Mustang, the 1983 Thunderbird, and the 1986 Taurus. The prototype Thunderbirds made the rounds on the show circuit. They were first seen at the North American Auto Show on January 3, 1999, and later at the Detroit Auto Show, Pebble Beach, the Los Angeles Auto Show, the Frankfurt Motor Show, and many, many others. This was long before Ford executives had approved its design for production. One of these cars was even supercharged. The public and the automotive press overwhelmingly loved the new Thunderbird and its styling. So Ford executives pressed forward with the goal of selling 25,000 Thunderbirds per year. Production of the 2002 Thunderbird began June 5, 2001. The first Thunderbird was sold as a 2002 model. The powertrain was a Jaguar-designed AJ-30 3.9 liter V8 rated at 252 horsepower and 265 foot-pounds of torque. You see, Ford had purchased Jaguar in 1999, so borrowing from their parts been made sense from a management perspective. This engine was mated to Ford's 5R55N 5-speed automatic transmission. The Ford Thunderbird was made available in two trim levels, deluxe with a starting price of $35,390 and premium priced at $38,890. Standard equipment for either included leather trimmed seating surfaces, dual power adjustable bucket seats, a leather wrapped steering wheel, cruise control, dual zone automatic climate control system with air conditioning, keyless entry, a security alarm system, 17 inch tires and aluminum alloy wheels, a power retractable cloth convertible roof, an AM FM stereo radio with an in-dash six disc CD changer, a driver's message center, the home link garage door opener system, a glass rear window with a defroster and automatic on off front headlamps. The premium trim received chrome clad alloy wheels, dual heated seats as standard equipment, and the 90 pound removable hardtop roof, which could be either painted to match the exterior paint color of the vehicle or painted in a contrasting color. The top included the two porthole windows. Available colors in 2002 were as follows, Inspiration Yellow, Thunderbird Blue, Evening Black, Whisper White, and Torch Red. Most body colors were available with the same color hardtop or with a performance white or evening black hardtop. This excludes the special editions. And speaking of special editions, 2002 saw the introduction of the Neiman Marcus edition. This was made available through the 2000 Neiman Marcus Christmas catalog. Only 200 were produced at an MSRP of $41,995. This featured a two-tone black exterior paint color with a silver hardtop roof, a scooped hood, 21-spoke chrome aluminum alloy wheels, a silver accented steering wheel and transmission gear selector lever, aluminum dash inserts, a perforated black leather trimmed interior with silver wing embroidered seat inserts, and Neiman Marcus embroidered floor mats. Ford sold 31,368 Thunderbirds in 2002. This would also be the high watermark for this generation. Oh, 
Ford Thunderbird. Let the stories begin. 2003 brought little change to the Thunderbird lineup. However, the driveline was upgraded. The AJ 30 V8 was replaced with the AJ 35, bringing with it variable valve timing and electronic throttle control. This boosted horsepower to 280 and torque to 286 foot pounds. This resulted in improved performance. Car and Driver Magazine tested an 03 Thunderbird and saw a half second gain in 0 to 60 times, clocking in at 6.5 seconds, and a 2 tenths improvement in the quarter, running a 15 second flat at 95 miles per hour. The only other changes were the available colors, which were Torch Red, Mountain Shadow Gray, Evening Black, Whisper White, Desert Sky Blue, and Coral. Ford did introduce the James Bond edition. This was a co-branding promotion for the James Bond movie, Die Another Day. 700 of these cars were produced. They featured coral paint with a white hardtop, 21-spoke chrome aluminum wheels, white perforated leather trimmed interior, engine-turned interior trim panels with a 007 emblem, and had an MSRP of 43995 Ford sold 14,678 Thunderbirds in 2003. If you're doing your math here, that's less than half of the year prior. 2004 saw no changes to the model or the lineup at all, save the offered colors and a special edition. 1,000 2004 Pacific Coast Roadsters editions were produced. These featured Monterey Miss Green paint with an ash metallic hardtop roof and a light ash softtop roof, paired with a light ash and dark ash interior and suede trim seating. Alloy wheels, colored keyed accents, a patterned dash trim, and a numbered dash plaque were also added to this model. Available colors for 2004 included Torch Red, Evening Black, Platinum Silver, Marlowe, Vintage Mint Green, Ice Blue, and Monterey Mist. Ford sold 12,757 Thunderbirds in 2004. 2005 once again saw no changes to the model lineup of note, excluding color choices. 2005 was the 50th anniversary of the Thunderbird, and Ford celebrated that with all the 2005 cars receiving the 50th anniversary badge. 1,500 Cashmere Special Editions were released. These featured a commemorative dashboard plaque, cashmere exterior paint, medium gray soft top convertible roof and hardtop, 50th anniversary front fender emblems, teal accented third rear brake lamps with illuminated Thunderbird script, two-tone gray and dark gray interior with cashmere perforated leather trim seating. Available colors were evening black, torch red, platinum silver, bronze, medium steel blue, Inca gold, and cashmere. Ford sold 9,295 Thunderbirds in 2005. With decreasing sales numbers year over year, Ford finally pulled the plug on this generation of Thunderbird. The 11th generation of Thunderbird was one that was born to fail. All they had to do was look at the sales history of the first generation Thunderbird. Then President Robert McNamara decided to add a rear seat. He did so because he felt that having only two seats limited the Thunderbird's marketability. And in 1958, the Thunderbird sold three times as many cars as it had done in the past. So it turns out he was right. The market for a coupe has always been a niche market. Anyone that has a family is almost immediately eliminated. And many of the potential buyers of these cars want a car that's sporty, it's fast, it either handles well or it's quick. And the Thunderbird was neither of those things. It was a grand touring car. And it did that quite well. The final nail in the coffin of this car was its price. It came in at $35,000. A Mustang GT convertible came in at $28,000. A Mazda Miata came in at $21,000. Now, a Mazda Miata and a Thunderbird aren't really the same type of car, but you are marketing to a lot of the same people. If you're a fan of the early Thunderbirds, the 55 through 57, maybe check out this video over here. That covers all those years and the features that were available on those cars. And it also talks as to why Robert McNamara added that rear seat. If you like this video, please hit the like button. That way other folks see it. That's how YouTube works. If you hit the like button, it gets shared. Also, please consider subscribing. That's always appreciated. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.